Alright, so we're looking at Griffith's electrodynamics, problem 6.1. What we've got is a loop of wire, um, so circular, right? And um, it has a current I going around it. Okay, and then very far away from that, we'll have a little square loop of wire, which, um, based on the drawing, right, it, the, the line connecting these centers is the same direction as this area vector, so it's exactly perpendicular to the um, to uh, you know the vector between these two uh, um, or I guess parallel to that vector right Th this axis is perpendicular to this axis alright so a different loop of wire this one's square but it has the same current um, going through it so what we were trying to calculate here is the torque on this loop of wire due to the field from this loop of wire. Um, right. yep. and, okay, and then at the end, um, we're just going to ask, like, suppose this one weren't nailed down, um, which way would that torque want it to, to move, and what, you know, which way is it most happy, most comfortable uh, being in um, basically the lowest energy state or whatever. Okay, so um, we are going to start with a, a couple of equations. So first of all, the torque on this uh, loop of wire is given by this equation. All right, so here is the um, magnetic dipole moment, right, of, the, of this loop, and then this is the magnetic field at this point out here. All right. So our first job is to we're going to try and find what this magnetic field is, and um, uh, we'll just approximate the field from this loop as uh, that of a dipole because uh, R is much larger than A or B. Um, so. Um, Okay, and I guess we need some axes, so I'm just going to call this way x, and this way y. Alright, and then z would be coming out of the page. Okay, <coughs> alright, so the field due to a dipole. I'm just going to use this form, so mu naught over 4 pi, 1 over r cubed. And then we have the dipole moment dotted into the r hat vector. Okay. All right. So what do we have here? Well, um, first of all, let's find m. Okay, and we know that is just i times the area vector. All right, so in that case, um, uh, I guess A is a little confusing here. It's not the same as this A. Um, there's I. Uh, make, make, let me just make this a capital A to avoid confusion. Okay, this is the area vector. All right, so I, and then we need the, the area of a circle pi a squared, all right, this time it's the little a, which is the radius of this circle, um, okay, and uh, the direction for this is straight up, uh, or the y hat direction, okay, um, all right, and then looking at this r hat, okay, that's the unit vector pointing out to this uh, source here, all right, so that's just going to be x hat, right? just the, the unit vector pointing in the same direction. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do this real quick. Mu naught over 4 pi, 1 over r cubed, all right? And this r is just this, uh, the distance, right? Okay, so um, x dotted into y, they're perpendicular, so this term right here goes to zero, okay? 
I'll just put a zero there to hold the spot for a second. Okay, now we're going to um, plug in our M right here. Okay. Um, okay, so this pi is going to divide out that. So we'll have a minus sign. We have an I. We have a mu naught on top. An A squared. Four and an R cubed, and this is in the well. I guess with the minus sign, it's in the the negative y hat direction. All right, so that makes sense. You can picture the the field lines just kind of looping around, and then when they get out here, they're pointing down, and then they come and they loop up again through and down. Okay. All right. So that takes care of our B. So. Um, <coughs> Let me, uh, I'll put a little one on this M. Okay. Um, just so we keep the dipole moments of this one and this one separate. Okay. All right, so now we're looking for the dipole moment of this loop out here, all right, which is little m uh, sub two. And again, it's just I multiplied by the area vector. I'll put a subscript two on this one, just so we remember. All right, and this one's just a square. A side is a B, is just a small B, right? B squared, okay. And the direction on this one, uh, the area vector is shown here, it's in the X hat direction. So now we're going to find our torque. All right, so we need to plug in this guy. So we have an I, B squared, X hat, okay? We're gonna cross this with uh, what we solved for, for B, this one right here. Minus I, mu naught A squared over four <laughs> R, and that's in y hat direction, like this. All right, so here we go. Bring the constants out to the front. Well, we'll have a minus sign, first off. Um, we'll have an i squared. We'll have this a squared. We'll have a b squared from right here. Um, we have our mu naught, and then we have four r cubed. And this is in x cross y direction, all right, which is equal to z hat. Okay, so, um, all right, so we see that the torque is in the minus z hat direction. In other words, it's pointing into the paper, all right, and using the right hand rule, um, the torque. All right, and um, yeah, anyway, the torque is going to be uh, pointed straight down like this. All right, um, and then once it's going, once it crosses over this, uh, this point right here, it's going to increase, 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 and it's still going to be um, pointed straight down. So you can get this from that um, cross product right here. So suppose we were at rather than straight off on uh, the x hat direction, maybe we were at some angle um, to the x hat direction, and that cross product will give you that. Anyway, the final story is that the, um, the torque is going to cause this, so if, if this is our um, circular loop, all right, area pointing up, right, uh, this one's going to be pointing down. So the current's going this direction uh, for this one. And let's see what the, I guess it's a little confusing trying to write this in. Anyway, but the, the, uh, the current on this one will be going the other direction.